Hey everyone, it's Fahim from Subscriber, contractor, founder of Medlearn. My brother is stood right there, he's making me smile. I don't know why he's making me smile. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about exactly what you need to be thinking about when you decide to qualify as a pharmacist and what options you have. We've actually got a new member with us, Krishna here today. And I did explain to him that I want him to also be recording videos. So hopefully in the future, this is going to be the future star. But anyway, come and join me. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you what you need to be talking about with your colleagues, your friends, and how to get the best out of your qualification. Come and join me. Imagine we're in this room and you're a new graduate and you're sat there and you're thinking, I've just finished my pharmacy degree. I've done my A-levels. I've spent four years on education. I've just gained my qualification. What do I do? How do I get the best out of my qualification? And also, let's be honest, how do I make money? Because in my opinion, if you make money, you're going to be wealthy, you're going to be well off, you can distribute wealth, you can help others, a lot of benefits. It is true that money itself may not bring you happiness, but believe me, it solves a lot of problems. So, you know, don't be afraid of making money. I think it's very important to do. But as a pharmacist, you've qualified, what options do you have? I think that we've got to group this into separate areas. So we're going to talk about remaining and studying as an academic. We're going to talk about working in community pharmacy. We're going to talk about locoming, hospital, and we're going to be talking about general practice and even industry. There's a lot that we have to talk about. And as you always know, I have two helpers here. One is Bilal. Bilal, say hello to the camera. Hello. Who's always there making comments? To, you want to say anything? No, nothing, something. No, I am tired to say something today. <laughs> <laughs> He's too tired to today. But I have my friend here, and this is some notes that my colleague Farouk has written for me that he'd like me to discuss. So we're going to go through these step by step. First one is the importance of an internship or your pre-reg year. So you, as a pharmacist, have to decide where will you do your pre-reg. Is it going to be a pharmacy or community pharmacy? Is it going to be in a hospital? Is it going to be general practice? Is it going to be industry, which is very, very competitive? Or is it going to be in a different field? It all depends on what you want to do. In community pharmacy, in my opinion, you get the best of all worlds. There's a clinical aspect, there's the business aspect, depending on where you work, and you get to develop your communication skills and speak to patients and so on. So there are plenty of benefits there. But some people will argue that in a community pharmacy, it's too much focused on just, and my brother is looking at me. He's not actually making me smile. We've got to get him in the camera. He's not making me smile, but it's something about him that's making me smile. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But just him being sat there in front of that computer is making me smile. But let's get back to what we were talking about. If you're going to work in a community pharmacy, what you need to think about is, what am I going to get out of community pharmacy? Number one is you're going to be learning definitely communication skills because you're going to be seeing patients. I also think you're going to be learning business skills if you're in the right environment. Maybe if you work in a huge organization like Boots or Lloyds, you might not necessarily have that same exposure, but an independent, definitely you have an opportunity to learn a bit more about the business. How does a pharmacy make income? How do you run a successful business. I might not be the best person to ask that question, but definitely there's others out there who have done extremely well. How do you prevent making mistakes, accounts, paperwork? So you've got the business angle as well. Definitely developing your management skills because you're dealing with people. And again, you might get a bit more of an experience in an independent pharmacy than a multiple like Boots or Lloyds, but you're going to have to learn to manage people. It's one of the biggest assets, one of the biggest skills that you can learn. And my colleague, brother Farouk, who's actually making the video, has always tried to get that experience across to me that you have to be able to manage people because the biggest, biggest skill set that you can have. There is clinical. I think some people argue that there's not much clinical involved in community pharmacy. It can be as clinical as you want it to be. If you have a patient with a prescription for an ear infection and you learn how to look inside the ear, you can definitely look inside the ear. So there's plenty that you can do. Adnan, did you want to add something? He wants to say something. And he's a naughty boy. So I think he wants to say something. Yeah, it's quite easy. Just describe Celodex. No. There you go. So even Adnan knows. Well, I know. It's just Celodex. I even Adnan knows that if you're working in a community pharmacy and someone has an infection, you can give an antibiotic depending on the indication. Celodex. Look, there you go. And he works on managing the business or running the business. And he even knows that there is a clinical aspect in there. 
So it's great to have him here. He sat in that chair. He's, he's having a lot of fun today. And I know he's a naughty boy. So he wants to say something. And then go, what would you say to the graduates? Tell us. What would you say to the graduates? Some good advice. What advice would you give them? Who Definitely are going to qualify? do independent prescribing, 100%. Because you have to do more than what was asked for. I mean, years ago, 10 years ago, when we started the business, it was mainly doing your customer services. Now, however, you have to bridge out of your customer services. And that leads towards where a lot of people will have independent clinics and this is where you're going to make more money and like Fahim said at the start money may not be the source of happiness but it will definitely take you a long way 100% also something I want to add is that you've spent a lot of time in doing trading and I think as a pharmacist sometimes we just get too bobbed down with just pharmacy are there other areas that you could say look as a graduate you qualified other than pharmacy what else should people be thinking and Farooq I'd like your opinion as well what else should people be thinking about other than just pharmacy? Definitely buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrencies, um, and your start into property development or properties, 100%, if you have the money. Farouk, you always talk about a YouTube channel. Is there any advice that you'd like to give outside pharmacy? What skill set people should have? Oh, did, you share, did you mention the other, other things that you sell? I haven't mentioned the things, but I will in a minute. Oh, yeah. Was there anything in particular you wanted to say that this is skill set that you should have? As you know that nowadays it mostly the, the pharmacy sector is changing. They are not only the pharmacists but also right the independent prescriber. That's what they can work in the clinic actually so they can help the, as a clinician to the people actually so the serving the people that uh, you mentioned many times. I, mean, I only remember that actually so I, I want to share it here. Yeah. There's another couple of things Faru talks about. YouTube channel social media, all of these make a big difference. Abraham the pharmacist, again, search him up on YouTube. He is a pharmacist and has gone and done something totally separate. I myself have gone and done with teaching, meddling and so on. So you can do exactly the same. And it all happened in community pharmacy because this is where I got to expose myself to different, different skills, different atmospheres, and I got to learn a lot. So community pharmacy, definitely a good one. Hospital pharmacy, again, hospital pharmacy is actually very different to community pharmacy. It's where you're going to be dealing with a different range of skill sets and a different environment. It may not be exactly what you're looking for because I know that when I did a hospital placement, you may feel that you're directly involved in patient care, diagnosing, treating, managing, it's slightly different. So we'll do a whole set of video on what you to expect in hospital pharmacy, but it's a different experience. And this is where you get to learn about conditions, it's about learning how hospital pharmacy works, learning about policies, so it's a great environment itself. A GP practice, definitely, depending on the experience you get, but you're going to be seeing patients, you'll have more role of diagnosing, treatment, management of disease, so definitely worth doing as well. Now, pharmaceutical companies, if you're thinking about working in industry, it's very competitive, I would suggest that you should start to do some experience before you even apply your peerage. I would also expect you to have some good links within industry, whether it's GSK, AstraZeneca, many, many different companies out there that you could work with. So definitely have a look at that. I think some of you may want to stay academic and work in academic field. I think academics play a huge role in helping us pharmacists to learn, come up with new ideas, new theories. So you could even stay as an academic pharmacist and work in a hospital, not hospital, rather work in a university, think about pharmacy practice, think about teaching. I have a passion for teaching. I think it's a wonderful environment. I think it really inspires you to help others. It's just going to be great to do. Adnan, do you need something? Okay, he needs an empty box. Krishna, can you get another an empty box? Yeah, my colleague will get that anyway. We don't worry, worry about too much. He's a naughty boy. All we're looking to get involved, break things down. He's always up to something. He's smiling. He's trying to break my rhythm. But we don't get phased by this. We're going to keep moving forward, keep going as we always do. So I've mentioned about university. Again, becoming a pharmacist, the first thing you have to do is get your qualification. You then do your peerage. And after that, you have to pass your peerage exam. If you're unsure about your peerage exam, there's Marvin Manju, good friend of mine. Get in touch with them. Pharmacy mentor. Again, they can help you as well for various other areas. Pharmacy Mentor, wait a second, they do with uh, website development, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. So ignore Pharmacy Mentor. If you're looking to develop your website, it's Pharmacy Mentor. But if you want to develop your, or pass your pre-reg, there's various trainings out. Then Marvin's a good friend of mine. He comes to mind, get in touch. He's quite you know, good at what he does. So that might be quite useful for you. There's other, other companies as well that can also help with your pre-reg. But that's going to be quite important. You might want to become a locum. And if you're going to become a locum, that's where you're essentially self-employed and you're looking for work yourself. 
So you can become a locum, there's various different groups and we'll put some links for some telegram groups and some whatsapp groups that you can join to help with your essentially locuming. But again, when you start locuming, initially a lot of people enjoy it, but afterwards I found out that they get a bit, gets a bit apparently, I don't know if it's true, but it seems to be a bit monotonous and people get a bit bored. So have a think about that, but there's good income. You can make a good income. So to wrap up quickly, look, if you're a pharmacist and you're qualifying, you could work in general practice, you could work in community pharmacy, you could work in industry, you can work in, let's say, totally a totally different field like academic. But it's all down to you, it depends what you want to do. My advice to you always will be to d invest in yourself, develop your clinical skills, get in touch with us at medlearn.co.uk. My number will be at the bottom as well if you want some advice. We're more than happy to help you. Let's build a better world, let's make a difference. Thank you for listening.